Hey, what's up? What's up? Joe in Vegas back with another review. It's not my fault. Concerts have been kind of weak lately. There hasn't really been that many great shows rolling through town. Uh, so the weekends have been kind of dead. Uh, there are some residencies out there. I, I've seen just about everything and I still refuse to pay, you know, $800 to see Adele. I'll wait, I'll wait a, a year, six months. It'll, it'll come down. So, uh, it's given me some time to go check out some of these other things going on in Vegas. I did a review for the Titanic. Um, so I wanted to go back. I, I've gone a couple times since I moved to Vegas about 10 years ago. They have something in town called the Pinball Hall of Fame. It used to be on the east side of town. So imagine you're staying at, let's say, the Venetian, that side of the strip. So behind the Venetian is the east side of town. There's really nothing down there. Uh, definitely for tourists. Uh, there used to be a big warehouse called, uh, it had the, the pinball hall of fame. You go in there for you to get in. It would just be this big warehouse filled with really old pinball machines, arcade games, all the stuff from my childhood stuff that is like, I mean, you talk about like sensory type of shit. Like the second you see a centipede or a Pac-Man or a Donkey Kong or a Dig Dug or Frogger, and you hear the the music from it, your body just goes into like it's such a it's such a crazy throwback. You know, arcades were such a big part of for my ages. You know, in the in the eighties and the seventies, it was such a big part of our lives. We didn't have any home gaming until like in television and Atari came out. There was a good period before that where you had to go out to play your video games. And it was part of like your your thing. And even when Atari and those places came, it was still a while before you know they they caught up with how good the games were out in the in the arcades. I mean, that was like a thing we did. You'd go to a movie as a kid, and then you would hit the arcade for two or three hours. So it's really neat that someone collected this stuff and decided to share it with people. So they recently, I think about a year ago or maybe two years, might have been right during COVID, they moved from the east part of town to the Strip. Uh, the location is, it's right by the Las Vegas sign. So it's so, somewhere between Mandalay Bay and the Las Vegas sign. Uh, welcome to Las Vegas sign. Um, you can't miss it. I, I, the, the, this, there's a massive signage that says just the word pinball. It, you could probably see that thing from California. It's so big. But it's effective. It's effective. Anyway, so I haven't been able to, I haven't had a chance to go since they moved. So I decided to go and see. If it was anything different. And it really wasn't. Uh, again, you walk into a big warehouse type of space. And there's just rows and rows and rows of of arcade games. Now, the one thing I noticed. And this is the only negative thing I have to say about this place. I could be wrong. If anybody works there or owns a place and, and is watching this. I would say 30, maybe 35, maybe I don't say 40. Maybe 30, 35% of all the games were not working. Luckily, they have so many games that there's plenty to do there. But I was pretty shocked. I know from the old place, things would always be broken here and there. I think what happened, because the place was pretty crowded, I don't think he was ready for the volume. I think he's getting a lot more volume now that it's on the strip. And I don't think these old machines can keep up. Now, I saw him there. I think I snapped a picture of him. I remember him from the last guy. I think he's the owner. And I think he literally is the guy walking around and fixing each one of these each one of these machines. But I don't know, maybe parts are skim. It's harder and harder to get these parts. Or maybe these games just took a beating and at some point they just become display pieces. Like this is what an old pinball machine used to look like. They just can't get it to work. So I think that's what happened. I could be wrong. But I think the, the volume on these things went up so much when they moved to the Strip that, it, that it's hard to keep these things working. But like I said, there was a lot to do and there was plenty of things working. The beauty of this place and why I really enjoy it, there's no charge to get in. I mean, that guy can easily charge five, ten bucks a head just out of the gate. He doesn't. The games are old school quarter games. And, and you know, I remember as a kid, you can put a quarter into a Pac-Man machine. And if you're half decent, that quarter could last you a half an hour. And I found that to be the case. I mean, I went there and I cashed in five bucks because I know... From experience, they have little of those old school change machines. You put in a five or a twenty, and it spits out a bunch of quarters. And you're walking around with these, you know, jingle jangle pockets full of quarters. Which again, that alone is a throwback to to the olden days and how it used to be. But I remember in the past, I put twenty in and had all these quarters, and I couldn't even get through five bucks. So this time we put five bucks in, 
And that lasted me, we were there, let's see, almost an hour and a half. So talk about, I mean, you find me something to do on the strip that costs you $5 and gives you that, you know, endorphin hit of, of these memories of your childhood. And that's exactly what it is. You know, you go right to certain arcade games. For me, it was more arcade than pinball. But uh, most of the arcade games there are a quarter or 50 cents. You put it in. You put your name in, old school with the joystick, and then the music kicks in. And these are little pieces of music that you haven't heard in 20, 30 years, 40 years. And it just brings you back, and it's so awesome. For the price of a quarter, it's fucking awesome. Uh, some of the pinball games, the better ones, the newer ones, the ones that I found most fun were the newer ones, the the, the, the heavy metal ones and the rock and roll ones. They had an Aerosmith, a Kiss, an ACDC, a Metallica. There was a Guns N' Roses that was not working. Uh which I've played before, which is awesome. Those games are about a dollar a piece. But again, if you're half decent at pinball, even a dollar is going to last you 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It's such a fucking bargain. The place is awesome. I don't, I, I can't rate it one to 10. I'm just telling you, go check this place out. If you're in Vegas, you're looking for something to do. It's very kid friendly. Not that many kid friendly things. You know, I, I was saw a bunch of kids and I was curious myself, like, do these kids care about these old games? These, these, low uh graphic games or are they this is so boring for them and the kids that i saw seem to be having a great time um it's just fun there's something about these old arcades and pinballs that are just fun highly highly recommended on so many levels it's different it's unique it is i i can't even tell it's so affordable this guy could be making a lot more money and he chooses not to and i tip my hat to him that's pretty fucking awesome uh and uh that's it i i, I highly recommend this place I hope this review helps somebody. I'll put up some pictures and some videos. Um, hopefully, I, I, I hope the guy can get more of those games fixed. Maybe I was just there on a bad night or something, but there were a lot of games not working. Maybe he needs an extra set of hands. But um, like I said, I, I never had to wait for a single machine, and it was a Saturday night, right? Yeah. It opened pretty late. I think it closes at 10 or 11. Check that out. Pinball Hall of Fame. Very cool worth the trip especially with kids even without kids if you're in your 40s and your 30s even in your 50s or 60s i think you'd appreciate the old pinball games it's a lot of fun thanks for listening leave a comment tell me what you think subscribe subscribe and i will see you at the next hopefully show if not i will see you at the next uh tourist trap because that seems to be where i'm going these days thanks for listening bye-bye